Hey fellow back there boyers, Nick here. Welcome to the first official Flint Napping Fridays. Now, last week I got a lot of awesome suggestions from you guys, so instead of just doing one type of video every Friday, I think what I want to do is just sort of mix it up and have a blend of full length tutorial videos where I show my entire process start to finish, sort of show and tell videos where I just condense down a video and do some editing so that maybe an hour's worth of flint napping is only about 10 minutes long. And I also want to do some tool making videos. I want to show how to make different types of things. And I also want to do sort of a beginner series. And this is going to be part of that. So what I've got here is a piece of just under quarter inch thick plate glass. And glass is really nice if you want to sort of just dive in and see if flint napping is something you want to do because it's cheap or free I mean you can find it just about anywhere if you're willing to look and a lot of places that do glass repair and replacement will be more than happy to provide you with some glass to do napping and small projects because it really helps them out so they don't have to dispose of it themselves and Glass like this is really nice because it's consistent. You don't have to worry about layers or inclusions or anything like that. So it's really straightforward to get started. But today I'm going to be napping an effigy of a heart. Basically, I'm just going to be napping a heart shape in here. And I think we might make it sort of an arrowhead pendant, something that could be either mounted onto an arrow or a little piece of arrow shaft as a necklace or even wire wrap. Now there are lots of ways to nap a slab or a piece of glass like this and the method I'm going to show you guys today is just sort of what I like to do. It's a blend of mostly percussion with a little bit of pressure flaking at the end and I like it because it doesn't wear down on my shoulder. I can nap all day and it doesn't really bother me but if I did mainly pressure flaking after just a couple of points I'd be in a lot of pain. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my abrader stone, which is just a piece of broken grinding wheel, and I'm just going to take off all the sharp edges. You can see the edges are really sharp, and that's another thing. When you work with glass or really anything nappable, keep in mind that all the edges are sharp. You want to be really careful when you're handling this. You can and will get cuts, so keep some band-aids on hand. And before we get started, make sure that you have adequate lung and eye protection because glass in your eye is very bad and glass dust, which is silica dust, can cause silicosis and other problems if you inhale too much of it over a long period of time. So safety glasses are good. Uh, so safety glasses are a must and you should either work outdoors or with really good ventilation and a dust mask or respirator is also a really good idea as well. Now the method I'm using today see all I'm doing is just taking off all of the sharp edges. Now the method I'm using today is sort of my favorite go-to method for working on slabs and since it uses percussion I'm not too concerned about these flats. Now if we were doing mainly pressure you would want to grind these down as well but for this all you really need to do is take off the edges. So I'm going to be starting off with a 5 8 inch copper bopper and this bopper was made by Jim Keffer of the Puget Sound Nappers. I'll put a link in the description to the Puget Sound Nappers. There are some really nice tutorials on making your own equipment and some other ways of getting into napping. But one of these Flint Napping Fridays I'll show you how to make your own set of boppers out of things that you can get at most hardware stores. So the first thing I'm going to do is just find a corner. I like to find a corner that's pretty stout. You see this one has a 
fairly obtuse angle to it. It's a little more than a right angle. So I'm going to start by just striking straight down. And you want to make sure that when you support this piece, you're holding on to it and supporting it, but you're not squeezing in from the side or pressing down in the middle because this will concentrate the force and you will snap your piece. So once you've got your piece supported, you just go ahead and strike straight down. There we go. So you can see I've got a nice cone-shaped fracture and this flat edge has now turned into a really sharp edge down here that slopes up to the other side. Now the method I'm using here is called zigzagging. I'm basically just going to be doing this over and over all the way around the piece until I've turned these flat edges into a sharp edge. So I'm just going to braid a little bit, mainly on this portion right here. And then just go a little in, make sure the piece is supported, and okay. so that was a little low, so I'm just going to hit it one more time, flip it around, and continue. So I'm just going to go all the way around the piece, and then we can start driving our flakes in, and on something that's thin like this, you don't need to thin it, but you do want to try and get rid of some of these flat surfaces because it'll really look weird. You can see how this flake scar really kind of clashes with this flat, smooth surface. And this is really important for slabs that have a rough sawn finish instead of a polished one like this. So as you can see, what's ending up happening is I'll usually strike about midway. And you can see now this lines up right in the middle. But to make it easier for me to strike my next flake, I'll go just a little higher and then take off a second one. I like to do that just because if you were to try to take that all off, it could shock the piece, especially when you get to the end here, and you might lose the tip. Okay, so you can see it got a little steep here, so rather than try to hit that a bunch of times, I'm just going to go back around this way and see if I can catch it on the other side. You want to be really gentle at the tips because that's where it's pretty easy to break things. I'm just going to come back here, flip it over, and then just keep going around.
Okay, now I'm getting to the point again. Just trying to be careful and not break anything. Okay, so now you can see that all of my flat edges are now this sort of zigzaggy sharp edge. So now I'm just going to re-abrade everything and I'm going to start sending in some longer flakes just to give this an interesting flake scar pattern, sort of a random pattern. So what I'm going to do is look and see where I have spots that are below the invisible center line. So you can see if you made an imaginary line going along the center of this piece, some of these go below it and some of these little ridges go ab above it. So I'm going to start with this one right here. I'm just going to go a little bit higher than the very edge. I don't want to hit just the edge. I want to go a little higher and hit this area right in here. That'll help drive a deeper flake. Another thing I'm going to do is set it just a little further back on my pad. That way I can get a longer flake. And this is kind of an easy way to get started. If you need shallower flakes, you move it closer to you because the angle will change. You bring it out here, you get a steeper angle and a longer flake. So let's see if this works. So there you go, I got a little bit of a longer flake. You can see it went about halfway in. And if I just do a couple more flakes like this, you won't have this polished surface. You'll have just these nice, equally polished flake scars. So I just kind of go around the piece to start, find all the spots that are just a little on the low side, just right, right there. There's another, let's try right there. And let's see, let's try back here. That was a nice one. Okay, now I'm going to re-abrade up here. See if I can straighten that and that. Let's try this one right here one more time. Okay, so you can see this side is pretty much all flake scars. There's one spot here that's a flat spot, but we'll take care of that. That's not a big deal. I'm just going to do the same thing to this side just to clean it up. And another nice thing about clear glass like this is that even if you do have flat spots, they're hard to tell even when looking up close. They look pretty intentional. So that's another thing that really helps out when you're first getting started. 
your pieces will look good even if your skills aren't 100% just yet. There's another nice flick. Let's try this one right here. There's another flick. Go Let's come back here. Perfect. Okay, so as you can see, both sides of this piece have flake scars and it's starting to take on almost a lens shape. So now I'm going to go back and do a little bit of trimming just to sort of take off these weird edges and strengthen up my point a little bit. And when I do this I want to mainly strike this way. As you can see I've got a little flat spot here. That's because you can see it sort of dishes in. You don't want to strike any spots that are dished in like this when you're at this stage. You want to make sure you're only striking spots that are coming out or flat because it's really easy to come in here and actually split this piece and remove this whole point. So I'm going to come back and do a little trimming. Trimming strokes are basically I just like to sort of hop the bopper up and down and just bring it in and you can see it removes a lot of material really quick and it helps you refine the shape of the piece really fast. Okay. A braid. And so I'm trying to get rid of these high spots here. So I'm just going to come in. So that looks pretty good. And now all of the really hard napping is pretty much done. Now I'm just going to trim all the way around the outside, round off the top, and then we can switch to a pressure flaker just to make our heart shape. So I like to go one way and now you see I have some nice areas that are below the center line that I can then strike this way. So as you're doing this, you want to get rid of the zigzag and you want everything to start coming into a nice edge. And that edge should be nice and clean and go around the whole piece. So as I'm doing this, I'm making sure that I sort of balance everything out as I go. Occasionally you might run into a spot where you'd like to do a little more thinning because the more you trim, the thicker this edge will get. Now personally, I like fatter edges on something like this that's going to be worn as a piece of jewelry as opposed to being put on an arrow and actually used. But if you were doing this on an arrowhead or something like that, you would want your edges to be a lot thinner. Alright, so that's looking pretty good, fairly balanced. So now I'm just going to go up the top here and... So before we get into pressure flaking, I'm going to try and thin this out. I want this to be a little thinner because we're going to be 
using our pressure flaker to go in and make the nice heart shape. So you want to support the end of the piece. You just place it right in there. My finger's behind the pad. I'm just going to put it in there. You don't want to squeeze too hard because you don't want to drive this into your finger. What you're doing is trying to keep vibrations from coming back and snapping the piece. Okay, so I'm going to turn it around. Turn it around. Alright. So now we've got something that's starting to kind of look like a heart. I'm going to take my pressure flaker, and this is a pressure flaker that I made with a piece of aluminum rod. You can also use copper rods, and in a pinch you could use just an iron nail. Though iron isn't as grippy, and so it's a little harder to get nice clean flakes with it, but it is doable. So now I'm going to take this pad, fold it over, and I'm supporting the piece in my palm. So when you're doing pressure flaking, and here I'm going to turn this a little bit so I can get into the end here. You want to take the point of your tool and rest it just above your platform. And it's really easy to sort of pick a platform that you want to remove. And again, make sure that when you do this, anything you go this way is below the center line. If you want to get to this, but it's high, like say if it's high like this spot, then you want to first turn this around, go in and take out that high spot, and then you can turn around and you have a low spot on this side that you can work. So I'm going to go right in here and start creating the top portion of the heart. So you can see made that flake and I usually like to just abrade it a little bit with the tip of the flaker take another flake abrade that with the tip of the flaker turn it around take another flake now I can start shaping the sides around it sort of abrade it with the tip of the flaker So now I'm going to bring this one in. As I'm going, you can see that I'm also shaping the interior of the heart here. Flip it around again. Take a nice flake. And when you're taking flakes, you're going to be doing two motions. One for shaping, you're just going to go straight down. So just pushing straight down, and that will give you smaller flakes, and it also helps establish your platform on the other side. Now when you want to take a long flake, you want to place the tip of your pressure flaker on it, and you want to build pressure. Now don't aim directly in there, because if you slip, you're going to slice open your finger. What I like to do is push in and then sort of change the angle a little bit so if I do slip I'm going down into my hand. You want to go in, build pressure and then pop. There it goes. And you can see that one traveled right into here. So now I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. I'm going to go around and do that one more time. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to change the shape of this one so it matches this side, which is really nice. I'm going to do the same thing that I was doing. You just start bringing everything down. Once you've got it about halfway to where you want it, you turn it around so that when you bring it down to where you want it, you've reestablished your center line. Here it is. So before I call it done, I'm just going to do one more round of the braiding. 
and just go back and make sure that all of my edges are nice and clean. You can see that I've still got a bit of a zigzag here, so I'm just going to go and take it down all the low points on one side. Turn it around, take all the low points on the other side. And what you end up with is a fairly nice edge. So I'm just going to go all the way around and just clean up my edge just like that. Now you can see here, this is pretty fat, and this area dips down just a little bit. So I'm going to come back a braid, and then see if I can drive a couple of longer flakes. So again, instead of just trimming, I'm going to push, and there you go. You can see that was a pretty good flake. It went about halfway across, and it got rid of the last bit of that flat spot. So. All of the flat spots are now gone. I'm going to do that here. And one right there. One right there. Now this spot's a little fat. You can see there's a little fat lump right here. So I'm just going to strengthen this up. Before I do that, I'm going to turn it around and just move my center line up. Just a touch. So I can get into the spot where it's thick and I can remove it. Right, so now that I've got my edge nice and clean, you can see my shape changed just a little bit. Now what I like to do is using the edge of my pressure flaker, and this is why I like the square edge, I can just take it and just run it like this, and that gets me a nice straight edge. Once I go a little bit, I flip it over, and then I take a little bit more on this side. And you want to just keep doing this. The reason why you want to alternate like this is because it'll help maintain your center line. And don't worry too much because especially on jewelry pieces like this, you don't want sharp edges anyway. So some of the really hard to get to spots or any spots that are really stubborn, you can abrade.
Now that looks pretty good. I'm going to take my abrader and gently abrade the edges. And as you're abrading this, what I'll sometimes do for a piece like this is I'll actually run it along the stone instead of the other way around. Is you want to round off any of the sharp edges because especially for something like this that's going to be worn or used as a piece of jewelry or wire wrapped, you don't want any sharp edges for two reasons. Sharp edges can hurt the wearer and they can also cause the piece to chip or break out easier. If the edges are completely rounded over and smooth, you won't have that sort of problem. Now you want to be careful because it will mess with the transparency of the glass if you say start abrading the flat. So you just want to make sure you're just getting the edges. I hope you enjoyed napping this with me today, and if you have any suggestions for other things you'd like to see me nap, or anything you'd like to see me make on Flint Napping Fridays, please let me know in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing, be sure to check out my channel for other videos like this, and I've also written several books on different topics, and I'll put a link to those in the description below. And I'd also like to give a huge heartfelt thank you to all of my subscribers on Patreon, it's because of you that I'm able to produce new content like this. So, thank you for your support, and as always, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!